good evening friends welcome to another episode of the global women in leadership conversation series i am aparna ji kumar the global chairperson for women entrepreneurship and empowerment of gcpit and your host for this evening women in leadership achieving an equal future in a covid-19 world this is the theme for international women's day 2021 global council for the promotion of international trade gcpit has started this global conversation series with women achievers and leaders to understand their journey to learn from the experiences and also to pave the way for more women leaders to join the wagon to create a sustainable change in the society in terms of gender equality diversity and inclusion today we have a very special guest with us to talk about her leadership journey she is a tunisian textile engineer with solid international experience in sustainable quality industrialization and supply chain She is the founder of Abir Sustainable Advisory in Tunisia, providing advisory and training services to companies and suppliers in apparel, fashion, and sports goods wanting to get started in their sustainability journey. She is now one of GCPIT's hundred chosen global women leaders and also the winner of Global Women in Business Awards 2021. Let me proudly welcome Ms. Abir Sasi to the show. Welcome, Abir. Thank you so much. Thank you for this introduction, Farma. My pleasure. Hi, Abir. How are you? We connected to the Women of Mix Second Edition, right? Fine. And yes, yes. Again, it's always you. a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Same here, and we are meeting again through this GCPIT platform. How do you feel? Uh, I feel so excited and so empowered. So I'm always happy to be here with you and to talk about my experience to empower other women. So you are a textile engineer with solid international experience, right? Uh, how did your yes. journey start? Can you? Ellis. Yes. Um, so I obtained my textile uh, engineering diploma in, since ten years, and uh, I worked in multinational company um, for for ten years in sustainability, quality, industrialization, and uh, supply chain um, with a suppliers panel uh, working on textile, on plastic, composite, leather components. So um, I was referring auditor and I was providing audits assessments in um, many suppliers in all over the world. Um, now I uh, I found my own company and I'm very happy to, um, uh, to to have it because I will be a change maker. I hope in my country to um, to provide uh, coachings, trainings, and uh, assessments for uh, for suppliers for the industry in my country. Uh, in order to achieve the 17 SDGs. Uh, I was about to ask that you're working on women empowerment issues globally and education yeah. equality. So how you became interested in SDG five and that is gender equality? Yeah, um, first I was interested in the 17 SDGs, but uh, according to my own experience and personal experience, uh, I think this the SDG five is dealing with my personal experience so uh, that's why there is a special uh, attention to this SDG um, as I one of the women who try to, to empower herself and um, tr try to, um, uh, to change the mindset in this world and to prove that women can uh, have all the leadership positions uh, in, um, in all kinds of uh, companies and industries. So, as a woman, uh, did you experience any uh, resistance or any problems in your journey, initial, especially in the initial days? Yeah, uh, for sure. It was not simple for me, especially during the ten years of my experience in my leadership in multinational company before founding my own company. Um, I was dealing with uh, almost men in in management uh, positions. So um, I, it was not easy to convince uh, male, co male colleagues uh, toward my decisions as I was referring auditor. So I was always the, the person who, who brings the bad news about audits, for example, or, and try to find solutions. So um, yeah, I, it was not easy. It was difficult for me to, um, uh, to be empowered as uh, they didn't trust my decisions all the time. Um, because in, in some regions, men that doesn't want that women told them what to do and how to do it. So they don't accept it. Uh, uh, yes, so I try to, to prove myself and to prove my decisions and 
to 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 push myself to um to be empowered but it was not uh, really easy that's why i'm here just to to give some advice and to to push other women to to trust themselves and to be um, inspired maybe yeah, that's great. And uh, you are associating with Sherpa Institute for the corporate uh, uh, handbook for of SDGs, right? So what is your role in that? How are you contributing towards this? Okay, so um, uh, starting from my, my company, I'm, I'm working with uh, some clients, some industrial uh, companies in, um, in several SDGs in order, to, um, in order to help them, to coach them to achieve one or several of those targets. Um, actually, for example, I'm working on the, the SDGs um, uh, 12 and 13 with one company, uh, trying to, um, uh, to promote and trying to, uh, to give them a assessment and support to achieve these goals. And, uh, and I'm actually working with uh, uh, teammates, a group of uh, very nice students from different universities, from Oxford, Cambridge, and Durham universities in London. Um, we met in webinar in webinar with, with uh, the United Nations, uh, one of the United Nations webinar. And uh, uh, Julia, she she was a student girl, and she was inspired by me. And she told me, "I want to become one day like you and have my own sustainability consulting company." So. Um, she asked me for help to, to, to give them some internship and it I'm really pleased to work with them actually with a number of, um, of students and they have their own startup companies for consulting so it's very um, nice and awesome to encourage other uh, women and girls to, to start uh, a leadership journey since they, they're, they're uh, finishing their studies as well. Uh, that's, it. that's amazing. That's amazing. I was about yeah. to ask you, uh, a lot of girls are looking up to you for inspiration. So who is your inspiration in your journey? Uh, my inspiration is uh, for mother because she, she was, she's a retired teacher, professor, and um, she's very empowered and, uh, uh, and uh, have a lot of values as she was educating a lot during 30 years so it's for me it's something awesome and wonderful so uh, she inspired me a lot to 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 have this um, this kind of leadership position uh, and uh, and to work hard and to uh, to to prove that women are always empowered and can uh, achieve leadership positions and um, for sure my brother uh, my brother he, he he helped me a lot that means uh, he's um, he has a great career in one of the biggest companies in the world. A lot with his hard work, and he was pushing me a lot to um, to find my own company, and gave me a lot of support. So uh, yes, uh, so family is supporting me. And it's um, it's it's for me uh, a good example to uh, to mention. Great, that's great to know. And COVID-19 has affected yeah. every industry. What was your experience? Was your industry affected and how did you manage the situation? Yeah, uh, COVID-19 was not uh, easy for me as for the whole world. Um, so I, I was obliged to, to leave my job uh, according to the economical uh, situation uh, in, uh, in my previous uh, job. So that pushed me to... Um, yeah, to, to find my own business and it was, uh, uh, it was uh, a, big, uh, a big achievement for me to, to do it because I want to do it since, ten, since many years, but uh, this pandemic, let me say that the negative impact has pushed me to create a good opportunity from, uh, from leaving my job and to have, uh, to empower myself and to, uh, to, to try to to be a change maker in my country first and in the world in order to um, uh, yeah in order to, uh, to to face the pandemic impacts in our environment and social life thank you so much uh, that was uh, great learning and uh, tell me a little more about abir sustainable advisory 
you help learn uh, in companies learn more about the 17 sdgs right how yes. uh, and you tell them how your business can adapt and benefit from the sdgs and how you can contribute to a better future so how do you do that what advice would you like to give to the companies <laughs> Yes. So first, in Tunisia, uh, almost companies doesn't know about the 17 SDGs. Um, it's um, it's published by the government, uh, right? But um, it's not the the current mindset uh, of uh, sustainability, which is uh, um, which is uh, present in mo most of uh, the companies. So I'm trying to present the 17 SDGs to explain them. Um, this Monday, I've, uh, I was giving a course to the University of Science here in my in my town to to some students in order to to explain the 17 SDGs and to to um, to, to explain how it's uh, why it's important to work on them why it's becoming a must actually and um, uh, it's very uh, pleasing to uh, to explain suppliers and try to enhance and Uh, their awareness towards sustainability and um, yeah the, so my job consists to to give advisory consulting that means i try to understand the project of each company and starting from this project and kpis and axes uh, on 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 which they're working i try to to in, to involve and uh, try to adapt it to the same environment and the social uh, project for each company so we cannot work on the 17 SDGs uh, once in, in one time but there we have to prioritize and to adapt it to the company project and then try to make the current situation work and benchmarking sustainability metrics the correction plan the best uh, see if the result is convenient or not in order to make problem solving and continuous improvement and finally capitalize uh, and make a standard for this company and then make the application for other sites or other companies so that's what i'm doing great and uh, what actions uh, can both women and men take to encourage more and more uh, women to lead uh, on the global goals from across sectors and industries including business and academy and civil society Yeah, um, so I think um, uh, that promoting leadership position for women is much more important. That, mean, uh, that means, for example, um, we need to push uh, companies to, um, uh, to hire uh, women, not only men in uh, leadership or current positions. Um, because actually, some companies are afraid of recruiting uh, some women because they're afraid Uh, from the maternity leave or if she's engaged or not, maybe she will not be flexible, uh, the working time will not be flexible or not. So maybe you have to change these habits because uh, I tell you an example, in, in my country, for example, the best job for, for women or a teacher or professor, why? It's it's very noble job, I love it. And my mom is a, a professor, um, but Um, the advantages for the families and the societies is that the time of each woman working as a professor or a teacher in education se sector is uh, the flexibility of uh, her time. That means she will have a lot of vacations and she will be available for the family and for the house tasks. So um, maybe we, we need to, um, to, to change this uh, mindset and for women Uh, job opportunities uh, make a balance between men and uh, women um, c candidates uh, when when hiring for uh, some jobs and also offer coachings and trainings making webinar promoting women leadership as as you are doing and 
your job is very what what you are doing is very in, inspiring and empowering so it, it encourages women to to go further and to uh, to push themselves to be uh, a leader yes that's what we have been doing and we are trying to learn from you all uh, so that we create more and more women leaders <laughs> And what is your organizational culture uh, for women and working mothers? Do you uh, take care of their needs? And what do you think every company should do to create a more uh, friendly atmosphere in the organization? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. So um, actually, uh, the, the problem for um, hiring women in, uh, in some positions in some companies uh, is linked to uh, to the fact that uh, she can have uh, have family and kids and will uh, will leave for maternity leave etc so the time will not be stable and sustainable um, and this is the most the most uh, the most, uh, uh, the, the most issue which is uh, occurring actually in the, in the industry here and um, maybe we need to provide um, paternity leave for men as women just to be to to make some balance between uh, both as uh, for example uh, we, we cannot have the same amount of days or months according to um, to the country uh, the, the local law but maybe you have to make some balance between both in order to provide um, the same uh, conditions for work for men and women, um, because the, the organizational uh, culture is very limited, as I told you, to the uh, position of education teacher or professor for each woman. It's the best job ever. She cannot be a leader because she will be powerful and she will have a lot of uh, job occupation. And it's not very encouraging for, for their families and partners and maybe husbands to um to uh, to uh, to be with uh, to be with her so i remember in my engineering school my uh, my friends and my my male co uh, um, co colleagues also uh, they told me i will never marry an engineer because she will be powerful one day maybe she will be a leader so it's something uh, that makes me afraid it's better for her to be a teacher so she will be flexible and she will have all the time for uh, the, the house uh, so this kind of ideas should be changed and we have to push women and men also to, to change this kind of uh, mindset. Right. What do you think uh, is the importance of communication while you are getting into global leadership positions? Yes, it, it's, it's very important to communicate and to promote it and uh, to talk about it because when you, you, you hear and when, when you see all women talking about their experience, when you see women um, in, in a leadership position, you will be inspired and you will tell yourself, okay, I can do that also. And by communication, uh, you, you can see all of that. And you can, um, you can uh, test or also by, by yourself to to make a small project. So I encourage all of you to start their own projects and not to be afraid and not to have this fear or this limited, uh, uh, this limited uh, perception of the leadership because it's something wonderful, it's something empowering and you will feel yourself like um, a queen because you will provide um, uh, something wonderful for the world, for people, for the planet and uh, we know that women are very hard workers, so we can um, use these uh, advantages and this uh, uh, nice quality to change the world and to have a better uh, planet with inspired people and empowered people, for sure. And in your leadership journey, what uh, did you feel are the most important traits a leadership process? Excuse me. Um, 
what are the most important traits you felt uh, important uh, values or you know oh, a leader should have yes um according to values yeah it's a, it's a good question um for me the self confidence is the key of the success to be self confident not to be impacted by the or things that you can hear every day every uh, every hour in your um, in your uh, working uh, in your job uh, also to, to be patient and mature that means to to hear okay you can hear all advices and all um, negative comments and consider them like points to improve there is no one perfect you can uh, just um, consider it that points to, to improve and and also uh, be open-minded uh, these um, yeah these these values uh, helps me to help me to uh, to go ahead and uh, uh, to empower myself uh, why because it, it's um, it's very important to be optimistic uh, because to, according to attraction law uh, being optimistic and open-minded will attract the positive vibes and will make you powerful and open for the change and not to be just afraid from negative comments and the people who say you will not uh, you cannot achieve it your decision is not right it's not the right way to do but we can learn from our mistakes and go ahead and that's what uh, what i try to do during my my career and uh, yeah but being uh, with a strong personality uh, maybe sometimes it's a barrier for me because uh, other male colleagues consider it as something strange and um, they don't accept it uh, easily i totally understand and uh, since you mentioned law of attraction i wanted to ask you more but uh, since we are coming to the end of the session i will catch you offline and ask so what advice uh, would you give to the next generation of uh, female leaders okay um for the next generation i i advise them to uh, to be self confident uh, be self confident is the it's is the first thing to do uh, trust yourself because if you trust yourself others will follow you if you don't that means others cannot trust you or your decisions if you don't do it by yourself so trust yourself trust your power uh, your human power your inspirations uh try to um, to to try to make a lot of communications uh with empowered people that means try to be um uh try to have contact with positive people in order to attract positive vibes in your life and personal life uh and also uh, uh not to be afraid or to 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 change your career or to uh, to um to attract a new experience it's always something good and positive you can success or you can learn you are always uh, you will always have uh, some success uh, and what else so i i advise also to help other women and other girls because maybe you will be an idol for them one day um, what else so um, i i advise them that uh, to to uh, to to be just self confident uh, also resilience is very important uh, so uh, that this is the, the culture um, that we know that the planet is under female power and we have to use this power for the best and and to 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 evolve in uh, in this world great and uh, my last two questions would be how do you feel being in the list of gcpit's 100 global women leaders i'm so happy um so grateful for you aparna i'm so happy to uh, having meeting you and a lot of wonderful women and uh, santos as well uh, yeah it's it's a real pleasure i'm proud of this and uh, i'm proud to be one of uh, 100 uh, women leadership for um, for this nice experience and uh, talking about 
my own uh, small experience is um, is very ple pleasing thing. So uh, yeah, I'm, I hope that we continue to be in contact. So we continue to be in touch in order to empower other women and to enhance and to uh, to change other our world for the best. Sure, we'll, uh, we have a lot to do together. Uh, congratulations once again. And Thank we you. are celebrating the Global Women in Trade Summit 2021 on March 5th, 6th, and 7th, where women entrepreneurs and leaders will be connecting to explore the next level of growth. And on March 8th, on International Women's Day, 100 amazing women will receive the Global Women in Business Awards 2021. What message would you like to give for the Women in Trade Summit 2021? Uh, the message I want to give is to um, to trust on uh, the women power and to trust on every um, event, every webinar, every communication uh, promoting women leadership and working on the SDG five. Uh, yeah, it's what's one of the most important SDG for uh, for all women leadership because uh, we are the examples uh, that can show the world that we have to move on uh, and we have to go ahead on it and um, I say that yeah uh, keep in touch and uh, be be um, be helpful for other women just um, yeah just to, to show the example thank you so much congratulations once again Abir it was great to have you with us today and I thank really you so much with thank you. you wish you all the best for all your future projects as well Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, dear audience, for being with us to, till now. We'll be back with another powerful global woman leader and sometimes stay, stay tuned. If you think you are an elite performer and looking for exponential leadership, join us. For all the information, visit gcpit.org. This is Aparnaji Kumar signing off. Stay safe and good night.